Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, A Little Geek, A Little Chic. Today we are going to talk about the books that I acquired in the month of March. So grab yourself, your beverage of choice, and let's talk books. everybody so you know that I probably have a few digital books because Kobo gets me with the two dollar books and they're always books that I'm like "Ooh, I did want to read that but not sure if I wanted it in physical form and if I love it then I will usually purchase it anyway in physical form for my library but right now I'm just content with having them digitally so I have three digital books and three physical books this month um, April <clears throat> I don't know if I'll have very many physical books. It is my birthday month. April is uh, when I have my birthday and I usually get books or money and get books. So I might get a couple of books for myself that I would like, but mostly a lot of my most anticipated reads um, that I wanted for the first part of 2021 is a lot of them come out in May. So I might just hold on to that birthday money or I might actually just pre-order um, a bunch of those May releases that I know that I really want and because when you pre-order through Indigo you get bonus plum points too which helps me get more money for more books so that might be what I do so you might not see as big of a little haul in April but there will be some for sure in May but we'll see what happens throughout the month of April to start off with let me just fire up the uh, good old iPad mini here and Get into the books that I got from Kobo. So the first book I got from Kobo is Bookish and the Beast. That is the third book in the uh, Fangirl, no, Geekerella series, which I have Geekerella right here. I have Geekerella. I read it. I loved it. Ashley Poston, uh, Poston, Poston writes great books, great characters, super easy to get engulfed in their story, and I just really love the Cinderella-esque um, vibe in a world of comic cons and fandoms. It was great. So in this we follow the main character who is a fan of this show and her two stepsisters that she doesn't like and her stepmother who's not the best. Cinderella vibes. She also works for the Magic Pumpkin which is a like a vegan-y type of a food bus or food van I guess and she is attempting to win tickets to this fan uh, big ball party so she can meet the people from her favorite show. Um, and the, her favorite show or comic has been turned into, I think it's a comic, has been turned into a movie and the, she doesn't like who gets cast as a main character. That being said, she goes to this, she wins this contest to go to this, thing, this ball, this thing, and she ends up finding out she has more in common with this guy who plays the main character than she thinks. And it's just a real good, feel good, great book. Super good for summertime reads. So that being said, I wanted to read her two other books, but all they have is hardcover, which is fine. If I like it, I'll buy the hardcover, but I've heard mixed things about the second book. It wasn't people's favorite, and I haven't heard very much of anything about the third book. And so Kobo had a sale this month, and I decided to check because I saw that Bookish and the Beast, which is the third book in this series, uh, was on sale for $2.99. So I snap picked it up on my little Kobo reading app and very excited to dive into that one. But then I was like, darn, I need to get the second book still. Maybe I'll just have to buy it. Cue Kobo, of course. Scroll through the list of other YA fictions that are recently released on sale for $2.99 and guess what's in there? Yep. The Princess and the Fangirl, book two of the series. So that being said, I got the book two, Princess and the Fangirl, and the Beauty and or Bookish and the Beast, which is the third book in the series. So I have all three books now. That one I read, I may reread it before I do the other two. I'm pretty, it's pretty fresh in my mind. You don't really forget this book. It's just a great feel-good book. But I may read it again before delving into the next two. Time will tell. I may just delve into the next two because I have them and I'm very excited to get to them. Uh, and see what my take is on it. The other book that I saw that was on uh, reduced in price and it was like $2.99 was uh, The Two Lives of Lydia 
Bird. This book's been on my radar since last year, but I wasn't feeling a crying contemporary at the time. And I still really am not, but I'm really intrigued about the book. It kind of gives me Outlander vibes, but not obviously big giant historical fiction Outlander vibes. And what happens is, is this lady, um, she's basically living in two dimensions. One where her significant other fiance husband has passed away and she is still with him. And the other is real time where she has friends that are trying to get her out of her slump and help her feel better about her situation. And one of them that may love her and wants her to stay. And she keeps going back to between the two, deciding which one she wants to be in. And it just sounds like it's just gut wrenching and I am here for it. It also kind of gives me like, not a hundred percent, but like, I think just because of the two loves having to determine which one you want. Uh, I just read, um, what was it called? One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And it kind of gives me that vibe. And I love that book. So I'm down for this book. Hopefully it doesn't mess me up too badly, but it sounds like a great spring summer read. So I'm glad I picked it up. Now on to the physical books that I got in the month of March. One of them is the most anticipated only one. The other two, I didn't know I was interested in until I heard about them. First, we'll start with the most anticipated, and that is Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. I was kind of disappointed when I was at the bookstore looking around for my most anticipated, some of my most anticipated to pick up, and that came out in March, and they said they didn't have any, and I'm like, what? How do you not have any? And I was also extra disappointed because that week I found out that one of my stores that I like to go to right now, especially during the pandemic, and we go to the chiropractor at this smaller mall in the city that is never very busy, but they have a Kohl's. And if you don't know what Kohl's is in Canada, it's like a small mall type store of books. And Indigo's our big one, Kohl's and uh, chapters. I think there is some chapters in Canada still too that are the big ones. At Kohl's are the tiny little mall ones. And I do tend to like those ones because they're smaller, but they still have everything you're looking for generally, including the big reading socks and all that kind of stuff because they are owned by Indigo. However, I was excited because I was going to the chiropractor and every time we go to the chiropractor, my husband lets me go to the bookstore and look around for some of my most anticipated. And they're usually, if they're just came out on sale, for a certain percentage off, like 20, 30% off, or they're on for like 15 or $20. So I was very excited to go hunt around and I couldn't figure out why it was saying on the app that there were nothing, like none of these books were at that store, not one, I'm like what's going on? And so I went to the main hours page um, and it said that they were closed every single day. I'm like what? And so I went to the website and I couldn't find anything out. And so I went to the Facebook and I go and I typed in the search bar of Facebook, the store I was looking at. And I found out that they, two days before I was going there, had closed their doors for good. That was so sad because that store has been in that mall for 50 years, guys, five, zero. That is a long time to be a store in a mall and get a following, especially there's so many seniors that live around there that like probably just walk across the street there. So hopefully they can get themselves a ride to the Indigo, which I get it. The Indigo is only like five minutes away from that mall and it's huge. So I was like, that's okay. Um, sad they closed, but I'll go check Indigo when I go out on the weekend or maybe just order them online. And I went to Indigo and they didn't have this book. I went, well, that's ridiculous. Okay, well, let me look around for something else I want because I had some gift cards. And I came across a shelf and guess it was sitting on the shelf. So they had the book, they just didn't have it in their system. But what this is, is it's a thriller novel and it says, so it begins this twisty, breathtaking novel that traces the fate of the Pine family, a thriller that will both leave you on edge of your seat and move you to tears. After a late night of partying, NYU student Matt Pine returns to his dorm room to devastating news, nearly his entire family his mom, his dad, his little brother and sister have been found dead from an apparent gas leak, apparent, while vacationing in Mexico. The local police claim it was an accident, but the FBI and State Department seem far less certain, and they won't tell Matt why. 
The tragedy makes headlines everywhere because this isn't the first time the Pine family has been thrust into the media spotlight. Matt's older brother, Danny, currently serving a life sentence for the murder of his teenage girlfriend, Charlotte, was the subject of a viral true crime documentary uh, suggesting that Danny was wrongfully convicted. Though the country has rallied behind Danny, Matt holds the secret. The night Charlotte was killed, Matt saw something that makes him believe his brother is guilty of the crime. When Matt uh, turns to the small hometown to bury his parents and siblings, his, he's faced with a hostile community that was vandalized by a documentary and frenzied media and memories he hoped to leave behind forever. Now, as the deaths in Mexico appear increasingly suspicious, Matt must unearth the full truth about his family's final days, putting his own life in peril. This sounds awesome, and I'm so excited to read it. I just love some kind of good thrillery books, uh, especially late summer to uh, early fall, and sometimes in the summer too, sitting at the lake reading a spooky book is great. You get the woods, the cabin, it's a good time. The next two books I wasn't sure I would want. The first one I didn't know anything about, and it is a memoir called Between Two Kingdoms uh, by Seleka Kawad. I hope I did not, or Jawad, Jawad? I probably butchered that name, but it is about a lady who is getting uh, out of college and she is ready to get into a job and experience things and then becomes terminally ill or very ill and what happens to her the next little while while she's trying to recover from said illness and then what her life becomes after the she has recovered potentially from the illness and tries to refine herself and who she is now and what she wants is it the same as when she was uh, just graduating or has her perspectives and things have changed and it just sounds like a heart-wrenching experience of someone's life and I'm here to read this. This sounds like a great book and it sounds very touching and I don't know too too much more about it but I'm very excited to pick it up and test it out and see if I like it. It is a popular one right now and it's just released so I think it was uh, $15 at Indigo, so you can probably still get it because it's a new release. They do sales on those, so I think you could probably still get it for that. And it is uh, the Indigo staff pick of the month for my Indigo. So, good one to check out. If you're interested in some nonfiction, I recommend some like that. They're a little bit easier to get into than, say, something like uh, Guns, Germs, and Steel and like stuff like that. I would recommend nonfiction starting out with someone's story. Um, because then you can just feel their story and you don't have to agree or disagree with their values or their views um, on topics. So I'm going to read that one and I'll let you guys know what I think. The last book that I picked up, the cover is stunning and I had to have it and it sounds fantastic. And that is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. And just, can we have a minute? Is that not absolutely gorgeous look at that it is gold it is beautiful it is wonderful it is magical and I love it and it sounds enthralling I'm so excited this is gonna be a great summary read um it's it could be a good fall read too I don't know but it sounds great it says in the 18th century London women whisper of a hidden apothecary shop its mysterious owner Nella who sells well-disguised po uh, poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. Nella's dark world is no place for her newest patron, a precious 12-year-old named Eliza Fanning, but their unexpected bond sparks a string of consequences that echoes through the centuries. 200 years later, aspiring historian Carolyn Parswell is running from her own demons when she discovers a clue to London's long unsolved apothecary murders. Carolyn's upended present soon collides with an explosive history. Binding her fate to Nella's and Eliza's in a stunning twist that transcends the barrier of time. And it sounds like it's going to be beautifully written and I'm all here for it, you guys. So I'm very excited I picked this up. And it's just, ugh, I just can't get over this cover is my, is everything. And I know it was a book of the month uh, club pick for the month. And so if you got this too, let me know if you're reading it and maybe we can read it together. Uh, we don't have Book of the Month in Canada, but sometimes I check what books they're going to have and they sound, they sound fantastic. I go find them. So, sounded fantastic. I found it. 
that is it for the books that I got in the month of March. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you got in the month of March. Did you get the Lost Apothecary? Are we going to do a buddy read? Tell me if you want to. And as always, thank you for all of the likes and the subscribes, and I will see you very soon with another video.